Yeah. So I'm going to look at, I, I've decided art is so last week that I've moved on to photography and um, <laughs> <laughs> I might come back onto art, <laughs> but it's interesting. You probably, you, you know, that the, the um, photographers I've chosen, has anybody heard of Jack Gary Winogrand? No. Anybody no. heard of Helen Levitt? I bet no. some of you have heard of Shirley Baker. Yeah. Yeah. One or two. But it, whereas if it was any of the um, artists I did, except perhaps for Mary Cassatt, you all have heard would have heard of them. So I don't think photographers are as well known. Maybe it's seen as a kind of lesser art or something. But um, I just thought it'd be interesting to have a look and to compare and contrast. One of the things I was just talking to my son about it was um, the different approach of different photographers, because the male photographers tend to be a bit more in your face than the women ones who see, who more negotiate the photo, the photograph with their their subjects. I think you'll see that in some of the differences between them. But the, he mentioned this Japanese artist called uh, um, uh, photographer called Tatsuo Suzuki, who um, was a Fuji film sponsored photographer, and they did a little promo on him. But it, it showed him being so aggressive with people, <laughs> you know, like going right up to them and taking snaps and, and shocking them and, and aiming to provoke a response that he was immediately delisted from that. And he's um, now gone into hiding, I think, because <laughs> he was such an aggressive approach. So it does vary an awful lot. Anyway, the, the first one I'm going to do is uh, and I'm going to do the share screen. Right. So um, it might you, you might hide the screen a bit on the right where you, you, all your images are, but it's good to have the image of people who are watching as well. Anyway, so it's called Gary Winno, Winogrand and the street photographer who those are his dates. And he's in his lifetime, it's said he did up to a million photo, about a million photographs. Some claim it was much more than that, but it was at least a million. And that was with the old film cameras, not the digital ones. So he was kind of a bit of obsessive. And if you see the way he works, there's a little video of him doing it. He's incredibly fidgety. He looks a bit sort of ADSL or whatever it is. And, but he's actually taking photographs while he's doing all that. He's kind of, anyway. So, um, so he's a very influential photographer. And in, in looking at the, and he, nearly, nearly all his work, not all of it, but most of his work was done in New York where he came from. And this is uh, Central Park Zoo, 1967. And um, he was using, as most of the photographers do, a small Leica Camry camera. Seemed to have been the, the camera of choice for all um, photographers until they moved on to digital. Um, he often took ones of Central Park Zoo uh, because he used to take his um, kids along to it. So that's where he got that one. But, George has come to disrupt my disrupt me. So that's that's one of them. That's one of his most iconic images. It's of of um, Coney Island. Now, I never know what Coney Island is. It seems to be like a resort in New York. Has anybody been there and been to it? No. But anyway, it it looks quite pleasant, doesn't it? I don't know if it's that within New York how clean it would be. But there you go. It's I picture um, it as an American uh, Blackpool. Yes, it is. Yes. In terms of the, the sorts of rights, it's, it's very kind of working class and down to earth mm. rather than a, uh, one of these, um, you know, Martha Vineyard type places. It's not, it's not exclusive by any means, but I think that's, that's a really good action photo he took. And it, his whole emphasis was in captain, capturing those spontaneous movements. And this one, I think, is a fantastic one. Huh. Again, one of his, it's during the New York's World Fair in 1964. And if you look at them, there's something going on all over that bench, isn't there? Mm. Yeah, what are they, what are they up to? Mm. So, Recognise the shoes. You used to wear oh, the shoes. I used to have a pair like that. And the dresses, the style of the dresses. Yeah. And the headband and the hairdo. <laughs> and they, you know, it, it says in the description, they're, they're gossiping, flirting, chatting, and you know, their postures and, and gestures. Style. Pardon? Nothing's changed there. We're, we're still at it. <laughs> yeah. It's very yeah. active, isn't it? It's a very lively. Yeah. It's, although yeah. they're sitting, it's it's very lively. It just feels very New York somehow. You know, there's a, it's full of energy, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think I think it's a lovely one, that. But they, interestingly, he, he 
one of the books he produced a photograph was about beautiful women and this i think was included in it and he got a lot of criticism for that from the feminist movement because he was you know was he taking them with long distance lenses or something like this it was it was seen as a bit exploitative and you know how i'm always interested in the background of the individual not just the artist so mm. he's not without his faults i don't think um but i suppose it was stereotypical of the time yes he his 1970 book 75 book was called women are beautiful and in a in a um a forward to that book more recently at the at MoMA, they said Winogrand's view of women was perhaps outrageous or was perhaps saved from outrageousness by its simplicity and openness and by its reckless enthusiasm. I don't know. I think you pay your money and it takes your choice with that one. I like this one because it, it reminds me of Mad Men. You know, remember the series? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> they're very much Mad Men. No. Oh, here's George again. Get out of the way. <laughs> George is interested. Like to see George. Yeah, um, and that's in New York, uh, nineteen sixty-two, and it was um, there's there's a lot again there's a lot of movement and energy in the photograph of a busy New York street. This is another one of the I think this is of the the uh, kind of an aquarium, the Central Central Park Zoo, and, and the, oh yes, this was the Coney Island Aquarium, one of the attractions in Coney Island. Um, he, he believed that there was a fo photographic value in everyday movements, everyday life, insisting no moment is more important. Any moment can be something. This is saying about it. He often, in these photographs, focuses on one individual, um, a, a single person who looks a bit pensive, and there's a lot going on around them. Um, he once said he never knew what the true story behind the picture was. All he cared about was the image itself. And it is, it's, it's somehow, you know, you can imagine all sorts of things happening there. Was it just a hold up because there was um, some roadworks going on or an incident had happened or was it some, something more than that? They look like riot police, don't they? Yeah. No, they'd probably have more face masks, but maybe that was in the early days, yes. But they, yeah, they're they, fairly mm. still, though, aren't they? I mean, nobody's yeah. looking as if they feel no, threatened it, it, in any way. They're relaxed look, sitting yeah. on there. I like the old, older woman at the front as well with her arm on the barrier there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, exactly what's going this is, on. This is one of his kind of beautiful women. One. He was also very keen, you know, or well known for his tilted horizons and angles you know he didn't mm -hmm. enable them to fit more into the scene and s somehow em eliminating the sense of perfection and design that you get in too many things it gives you know, i you look know. like that in those days <laughs> i mean i had some hot pants okay we we need photographic evidence of this next time please <laughs> i haven't um, got any of a phrase sorry <laughs> <laughs> But it, 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 so the idea that you can take things at any angle and it's still a picture, I think, is an important one because you tend to think this is no good as a picture because it's not full on and straight and equivalent. And I think mm. he overcomes that one. Another one from 1970, um, capturing an unguarded moment. And he thought, you know, it's not up to him to make it. He never gave his, his photographs anything other than a title of like New York 1970. He didn't sort of say a couple having a row or something like that. He felt it was up to the uh, viewer to, to work out what, what they thought it was about. So there was uh, no information in, in his titles other than where it was taken, New York. <laughs> I, I like this one as well. What a fabulous outfit on the left, that is. Yeah. Elegant passers-by were among mm. his uh, most recurring subjects. Not sure about the hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'd like one like that. Um, yeah. Right. He often snapped, snapped <laughs> images at just a time when they realised they were being photographed, and I think there is some indication of that. Anna? It's quite in oh, sorry, interesting oh, looking at the backgrounds and seeing all the street furniture and the yeah. cars. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. It gives it a That's context the of, of the sheer number of people around in somewhere like New York. Yeah. Yeah. And this this was really at the height of New York's New Yorkness, if you see what I mean. It was, um, 
it's a very brash everything going on um place this was uh this this laughing woman here that's lovely i like that holding an ice holding an ice cream remember the wind is like that he never asked people to pose for photographs he always took it when he felt it was right and you can see with that one it's you know it's not perfect is it? you've got the image there on the left of it's is that on the corner is it looking through something is it reflection in a window it's hard to say isn't it really mm. it doesn't matter because your attention is is totally taken up with uh, the image of her which is, does appear real and natural so i think it's a very nice photo that was 1968. <laughs> this is it one of his oh. earlier ones 1959 Aww. um and so, some of his were were some of his photos were um a bit disconcerting and he he was quite happy to portray that the weirdness of post-war america you know like what's, what's somebody going along with a, a, a monkey in the back of their car it seems a really people did have a wish pass. yeah i suppose people did didn't they yeah, still do and i really i really like this one this is a Staten Island ferry, so presumably that's where it takes you out to Staten Island. That's familiar and, to our ferry. <laughs> yeah, and it, the, the people in the middle really—it's uh, almost like the part, the rest of the people uh, have been put there to highlight the fact that they're there. The two of them. I like his um, his very thin tie. Very. <laughs> when, when when was this taken? It doesn't say when it was taken. It's like. Sixties, doesn't it? Really you, can around, you can look around and see all the um, all the different looks that people have got on their face. The woman at the front, you know, sort of saying, "Is he taking a photograph?" Little boy, and so on. Now, what does that make, immediately make you think of? Like suicide. Suicide. Well, it, it, re it reminded me of nine eleven, actually. But it isn't. It's obviously, it's nothing to do with that. I think it was just somebody jumping up in the air rather than, I mean, I don't know. Um, and it's very mysterious and confusing. You really don't know what's happening there, do you? But I don't... Well, the man looking at him is smiling joyfully, so it, I don't think it can be anything tragic. And the other two face, face you can see again. Yes. They, they've got a look of delight, haven't they? And there's balloons. There's yeah. balloons on the other side, as if there's some sort of. I bet there's a trampoline under there. Yes, that's. It don't look he's miserable. Got a cig has he got a cigarette in his mouth? Not he's got a cigarette in his mouth. Yeah. Not. Could and be, couldn't like, it? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's a great, it's a great photo. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> I didn't know he'd taken this one either. Is that his? Is yeah. that his? Yes. Is that it's iconic? God, yeah. yeah, it's obviously it's Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, and it was uh, shot on the set in New York of Seven Year the Seven Year Itch film she was in. Yeah, and her positioning over the subway grate meant that as, as a train passed by underneath, the resulting air rushed above and sent a dress flying up. Um, the the original photograph was taken as a publicity stunt for the movie which included a lot of different phot photographers, but they chose um, chose his as the, the one that Very they good. liked. Yeah, it's fabulous, that. Well, the, 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 the re I think they realised, though, that in his photograph, I don't know whether it was this actual one, um, it was deemed too risk risque for the, uh, for the to, to advertise the film, but it was still used for pr promotional ads, helping make the film the biggest success of 1955. And her exposed legs solidified her um, sex symbol status. But it also, apparently, it signaled the end of her marriage to Joe DiMaggio, who I think was a baseball player, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, hmm. He was present during the filming of the scene, and he couldn't tolerate her exhibitionism because she played to the crowd a bit. And the crowd's approving response, which was, I imagine, quite. He filed for divorce shortly after filming ended. <laughs> So there you go. Very jealous, very jealous. Yeah, she's amazing, isn't she? Again, she was um she okay. was well she was well known, you know, she she was she was taking photographs maybe slightly earlier than uh, Winningrad, but uh, round about the same time. So it's an interesting contrast in styles. Oh there's George again. Hello. Fast. 
stay where you are um again she, she's best known for a new york street photography she her parents were russian jewish immigrants and she started to work for a commercial photographer uh, where she learned how to process film and inspired by another very famous street photographer as well as you could say Henri cartier bresson uh, she took a, a 35 mil leica and um, to the streets new york times described her images as fleeting moments of surpassing lyricism mystery and quiet drama she died quite in 2009 at the age of 95 and she said about herself if it were easy to talk about i'd be a writer since i'm inarticulate i express myself with images she was also um very a kind of very left-wing photographer as well she saw a purpose of it was to to uh, photograph ordinary people and to give their their image of the world so she she ex it was interesting that probably the best of her work or what she thought the best of her work was done in the 1930s and 40s why do you think that is the case why would it have been good then rather than later the changes going on yeah you know, what changes were they Oh. Was it the war? Post war. Well, not so much. Well, the 1960s and 70s, particularly. Yeah. No. First of all, in, the, in these times, there was no air conditioning. So people were out on the streets an awful lot more than they ever were later on when air conditioning became um, typical of buildings. And secondly, and you see this very much with um, the next one, Shirley Baker's photographs of. Of, of children in 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 Manchester and Salford, where yeah, the, very, there, was, there was a lot of um, demolition going on, um, they were out because there was no television. Once you got television, people stood it, yeah. stayed in it's a lot more. So it, it could be that the, if you like, the um, the wonder years of street photography were were in this period. There's certainly a line to take anyway. She she lamented at the change of New York scenery. I go where there's a lot of activity. Children used to be outside. Now the streets are empty. People are indoors looking at television or something. She's she, was, she's she, she's, she started oh, off by, um, by looking at I children's like chalk drawings. She did a oh, whole pile of, uh, it's nice. <laughs> oh, I love it. They're really yeah. creative drawings, aren't they? They're beautiful. Yeah. And she was, Gosh, that's good. Uh, a lot of her work was with women, children, and minority communities. I, I really like that one, and she did quite a lot. Is that of snow on the steps? The remnants of snow? Could be, could be. You do get snow in America, but it's looks cold. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what time of the year it was, it was taken, or even when with that one. This was a, a later <laughs> one. She did quite a lot in um, in color when she uh, later on in the, and this was a a child playing near a green car probably looking for something yeah just there's another similar one to that in, in shirley baker's um, photographs but she was at the time she was she's she was not well known um you know what what's she doing there she searching for a lost ball or even worse a treasured coin i used to be like looking for me balls always well that's right you know he says have you bent into a weird crab-like position just to see if you can find the missing piece? You know, she doesn't yeah. go on her knees to look at it properly. She's doing it in a kind of weird I, sort of way. That way. So she's contorting herself and it's against the thud of the green of the car. Um, it just, it, well, the, the usual art commentary is that it, it's a sense of timeless poetry which runs through all of her images. <laughs> so she does, she does look at the ordinary and is... Um, able to elevate it from the, the drudgery and poverty of the moment. This is um, another New York one in very much earlier. Hmm. 1938. <laughs> and I noticed just as I was deciding to look at her that there was a, an article in The Guardian about her a couple of weeks ago. There you go. Um, and there, there is a, a retrospective of her work opening in uh, the Photographer's Gallery in, in London this, this October. And this is what they, they say about her. For too long, there's been this received notion that Levitt's photographs are lyrical and poetic, words that are, are too often applied lazily to the work of female photographers. Um, 
The truth is that Levitt was part of a highly intellectual, cultural and political milieu in New York in the 30s, and her photo photography reflects a deep interest in surrealism, cinema, left-wing politics and the new ideas that were then emerging about the role of the body in art. That, it, it, that looks like a scene out of a film, doesn't it, really? Swallowing a dictionary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is good. Oh, nice. It's um, she, she, she did it near where she lived. You can see all the kids as well in their swimming costumes oh. and things. And it's, it's typical of when they, they crack open a fire hydrant to keep themselves cool, which we don't have them in this country, but they, you know, it's illegal to do it, but they do it too. And everybody goes out and bathes in it. It's like a fountain. Yeah. Nice. Wow. What fun! The kids must That's love that. Yeah, absolutely, they did. Yeah, it's a, a very different world to, to it now, isn't it? Because it's the city streets were te mm. teeming with children who played with reckless abandon on waste grounds and vacant buildings, very much like post post World War Two um, uh, uh, British children in the bombed out city. <laughs> I'm sure mem mem many of you can remember that sort of play oh, going. Yeah. On. So, and it's seen as a, some, very different to some mostly male practitioners. Um, uh, but her, it's like that they, they were very much, she doesn't charge in like the male street photographers, tending to, you sense a particular quality of contact between her and her subjects. There is a tenderness and absence of ego that tells you what kind of person she was. <laughs> a couple of cool, cool dudes there, eh? Yeah, <laughs> and and in fact, in her photographs, very often the people are often presenting themselves in regard to the photographer that they've got. You know, they're putting on the style, aren't they, to a certain extent? Yeah, <laughs> sure. yeah. the striking a pose. Um, mm. It's a it's a performative exchange, and that le leads to it's a very contemporary resonance. Love that one. It's great. Here's another one. Oh, look at these. Look his chest. Children still look like that now. They do, them. don't they? They've got that 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 that, that brash Character. confidence of very young kids that some at time have, which is fragile but really really interesting to see. And it was, but she was she was very involved in the social realism of the left wing workers film and photo league. And she she saw photography as an agent of social change. They're never becoming. Um, as wholeheartedly involved in that as other photographers who got themselves on an FBI watch list. I decided I should take pictures of working class people and contribute to the movements, Levitt later said. And then I saw the pictures of um, Cartier-Bresson and realized that photo photography could be an art and that made me ambitious. So the kind of realistic and the poetic were, were, were dual influences on, on her style. Uh, and they're, they're almost choreographed, the photos of children. Right, so she began to shoot in colour in the in quite early on. Do you remember those machines? Are they still around? Where oh, you can put a yeah, yeah, the gobstop. Yeah, you used to get yeah. the yeah, gobstop. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, sometimes a little toy in them, didn't they? As well. Yeah. yeah, I do remember that. It was always in there. <laughs> but unfortunately, most of her colour negatives were lost when her apartment was burgled in 1970 and the only things that are taken were the pho photographic negatives oh gosh it's interesting isn't it yeah what were they uh... <laughs> oh, look at these. <laughs> kind of yeah that you see that a lot with mums <laughs> kids in there <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually, she actually said they, they, there is a view that her later work showed the how the city become increasingly regulated by consumerism and cap capitalism. That too has a real resonance for our lives. <laughs> I like the way they're all crowding into that. Um, yeah, we well, sit below yeah. in yeah. a phone, yeah, the phone box with your children. <laughs> Just say, get out, get out, you're in my way. It, it's thought that the. Um, that her, her photography is getting more resonance now, partly through the uh, feminist rediscovery of uh, women's creative achievements. And I think that's, oh, hang on, that was George on my keyboard. Get off. Oh. <laughs> it's warm on there. 
Hello, George. Oh, I've missed you. <laughs> Do you hear that? Right. You would miss him if you don't see. Oh that's... my. Oh, that's cool. You still see people. People call her the, the New York's visual poet laureate, providing a lyrical understanding of her surroundings, free from stereotype or judgment. Um, her, her photos seek, seek to humanize ra the people rather than just be a voyeur. She also dabbled in filmmaking and was an early pioneer of the New York avant garde movement. Shirley Baker. Yeah. Now, I'm, th I'm thinking actually of doing uh, a talk for Chalk Good Neighbours History Group just specifically on Shirley Baker because I did know oh. of her photographs, but I didn't know how many she'd taken and the different like. styles of her work and they are just i think fantastic photographs and deserve something and also her daughter lives locally and has um, curated some exhibitions from her and to a certain extent when you try and google her she's not the first shirley baker that comes up she's about you know the fourth or fifth she's still not that well known maybe we know more about her because she was a manchester um, photographer so she was she was born in in Kersal in Salford and nearly most of her street photography was in Manchester and Salford between 1960 and 73. Um, and in the wake of the Housing Repairs and Rents Act of 1954, which I'm sure you all remember, um, 1.3 million homes were demolished during that period. And in her images, you see the clash of old and new as sooty children play in front of decrepit houses with uh, tower blocks emerging in the dis distance. I did know that fundamental changes were taking place and nobody seemed to be interested in recording the faces of the people or anything in their lives, she wrote later on. I think that's what she did. There she is on the left. There's one of uh, Salford, 1965. I'll go through these fairly swiftly because I think we're running Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> Look at the shoes. Well, we used to do that. Walk down the <laughs> yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I, I've seen my granddaughters. My granddaughters still yeah. do that. <laughs> they all do it. We've all done it. <laughs> She was a she was a doctor's uh, wife eventually. I, I didn't realise that. But, um, so this oh, is what she said. Ah, oh, Cholton, hey, we're in the map. Cholton on Medlock, not Cholton come Hardy. I know, it's still yeah, 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 still Manchester. A lot of them, are, in fact, the majority are in Manchester rather than Salford. But um, she's not have we a date Salford. on that, Bernard? Uh, yes, 1966 says at the bottom. Uh, but it's surprisingly yeah. late on, isn't it? But it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's Rochdale. Out like that. No, it's Chalton on Medlock. That. It's, um... No, we used to have me washing out in the backyard. Like. Oh yeah, yeah. That was. That was everybody's street, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah, that's yeah, fabulous. Yeah. That photo. Look that at them all. Look. Really good. <laughs> I think it's a lovely yeah. one. I was twenty-one when that was taken. You used to hang around the. Uh, I was thirteen. Uh, yeah. And the, th the fact this. is. There was nobody else, or very few other people doing this. It was a transformative time, and she she was a really good recorder of it. And it's you know we've really got to thank her for having done that. These are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you remember this? Uh, yes, oh, I was. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. This this is on the uh, on the beaches of Blackpool. She also did North Wales as well, real places like that. Um, in Blackpool. Maureen would have loved this. Yeah, I like the fact. <laughs> why she Go got that there. thing? Why she got that thing over her mouth? Is that because it gets sunburnt particularly? I don't know. Sunburn. Yeah. Yeah. She's a bit overdone the sun. Look at her. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's fair skinned. Look, she's freckled, so she yeah, won't want yeah. to. Well, we yeah. wouldn't be doing that nowadays. Well, I certainly wouldn't. No. But, well, I. I she had I can't either. I like the curlers in on the right. Do, st do women still wear curlers like that? No, my mum used to like that. She's chopping. Yeah, and there was there was one where you can get heated rollers, couldn't you? What were they called? Yes. Mary yeah. Box. I've got I've some got... in the back of the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come back into fashion. They'll come back into fashion. <laughs> Box, let's see. Here I am. Here's a comment about her. Baker's gaze alights kindly on her subjects, never sending them up for a cheap laugh. Her photographs of fathers playing with the children in sand and sea are singularly touching. Yeah. Listen, again, <laughs> <laughs> you always saw them on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. <laughs> trying to cover your head up with anything you've got you forgot to bring a hat so you, you had to do that yeah, yeah. yeah. do that now in the this was in wilmslow amazingly that's the one on the cover isn't it of the new york one yeah 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 basis yeah yeah it's fabulous she, she, died, she, she died in 2014 and she left a huge amount of fo photographs with her daughter nan levi and um there were all sorts of Im images that they're getting together to to make a new exhibition of them which hasn't happened quite yet I, I, love, I love this one <laughs> you remember that one yeah. in, in America of the girl bending? Yes. Yeah. Did you ever lose Even anything the down the drain and try and retrieve it? Well, what a mucky marbles. Thing that was. When I was playing marbles, I was always getting the drain cover up. Where's my marble? I like the way the dog's looking down there as well. Yes, <laughs> I, that's what I. What was it? Oh, what are they up to? I was <laughs> retrieving my marbles out of it. Cool. Oh, Hume. Oh, yeah. Mary would have been so interested. That's in me. I love you. I love quite next to him yeah I yeah that well. was the, that's the church in all saints i think in the background if you yeah all saints yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. and and the the idea of, of you know these old used to be gas lamps and they became electric lamps with the bars on that you could put things like swings and things on i think that's <laughs> very typical as well and the girl with a, an umbrella that doesn't seem to work very well <laughs> <laughs> Broken umbrella. oh bless her an ice cream van visits you. Oh yeah, we always saw an ice. We always had an ice cream. But that's it's Gerard's, who I think are still going, actually. Yeah, God, yeah, remember them days, yeah. But, but this one, this one, I didn't realise happened. I mean, again, it's a terrific one. There's just so much going on there, and these these old um, prams. When I was young, we really yeah. looked for old prams because their pram wheels were brilliant for making bogey. Yeah, yeah, that's Anybody right. Had a bogey. Yeah. I'm pushing. With my brother and me on hanging mm. on. All those one. things there, Bernard, if you just go back there yeah. to that one. In uh, my apprenticeship in um, Castleton was yeah. replacing Tipler toilets with a flushing toilet. Yeah. There was a grant to do that. Everybody had a loo, didn't they, at the bottom of the yard? Yeah. 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 Which is what they probably are. That was good when I moved in. Yes, yes. But this one, it's um rehousing Rehab. Claim. gosh that tells a story doesn't it doesn't it just i'm going to yeah. go through these fairly quickly but look at that you know yeah. this is of course that they, they were knocking down the houses and they didn't have much say in it they just yeah, um... yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> looks, looks like a daddy yeah. shoes that doesn't it i didn't oh. have a problem. i didn't have one <laughs> Beat cricket. Yes, Again, I'm just going to race through these because I haven't got much time. Oh yeah. Oh, fabulous. Happily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> having a having a horse there. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, but that type oh. of horse. Not yeah. much. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It's extraordinary. I don't know how that go on. This one, she went down. She was in London for a while. Oh. I love this one. Oh. The the punk there and the guy beneath. It's a wonderful photograph. Isn't it? <laughs> That's in London. Friend. And this is one in Paris in 1961, so she did go around. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> that is a fabulous photo, isn't it? It's wonderful. Look at the lipstick. Well, we're down to the last minute, so I'll just go. This is Woman on a Bench. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Untitled. I don't know what that was. Yeah, remember that. I like the cat. Yeah. Very typical one. Oh, wow. 